Yeah. Okay, so you have this slide, right? Okay, great. So, um, hello everyone. I want to start by saying thank you to the organizers of this fantastic conference. Um, I'm going to show all unpublished data from uh, part of my postdoc work in Troy Margrie's lab. And uh, this is all on angular velocity representation in the retrospinial cortex. So to start with, um, the sense of uh, direction requires, on one hand, an accurate estimation of momentary heading direction, which is thought to be presented by head direction cells, but also, on the other hand, the ability to update this with subsequent head movements and as the animal move within the environment. And it is um, um, well established or uh, well taught that this uh, updating requires the um, integration of angular head velocity or AHV uh, signals. So this AHV information can be obtained from a couple of um, uh, sources. For example, when there is no visual uh, input available, uh, it can be obtained from vestibular inputs or proprioception and motor efferents. And also when vision is available, optic flow can be another source. Now, despite uh, many um, awards on head direction cells and other specially tuned cells, Still little is known about computation underlying this AHP coding, particularly in higher order cortical regions of the head direction network in the mammalian brain. And uh, for example, it's not very clear uh, whether um, which of these sensory signals are the major contributor of AHV uh, coding and what is the role of the other inputs there. So we address this in the retrosplenial cortex uh, of the mouse. Here I want to draw your attention to this diagram of a uh, head direction network and where uh, RSV is located uh, to point that it has a connection with ascending vestibular head direction pathway and also visual cortex that could uh, uh, provide vestibular and visual information. And also there's many studies pointing to RSV being important for self-motion based navigation and also spatial orientation both in uh, animal models and in humans. So to start with, I perform single unit recording in the RSV of really moving mouse um, and exploring this arena and identified three types of cells important for sense of direction, uh, the head direction cells, and also those tuned to self-motion variables, including linear locomotion speed and also angular head velocity or AHV. And, and to summarize, a majority of the cells recorded in this area were actually tuned to AHV. And um, um, there were also a lot of uh, conjunctive coding. And uh, to uh, point out now to this AHV population, uh, many of these cells uh, were also tuned to the uh, direction of head turns, the right or left turns. So they can encode both the speed and the direction of head turns. Um, then um, basically to understand what is the computation underlying this age recording, ideally we uh, should record from these cells in freely moving and then uh, continue to record it from the same cells in head fixed condition where we can have a precise control over sensory stimuli and uh, parametrically vary the sensory uh, parameters. So uh, this is the approach that I adopted by recording the same AHV neurons uh, during uh, passive uh, rotation uh, of um, um, body restraint and head fix mice uh, in darkness and also I will uh, show in uh, presence of visual um, uh, signals later. Uh, so in this way we could uh, get rid of any locomotion or uh, voluntary head movement contribution. Okay, so I just show you quickly the um, rotation uh, setup, the head fix setup. A mouse will be head fix in uh, the center of this arena, which will be rotated clockwise and counterclockwise direction, either in complete darkness, or as you can see here, in presence of this vertical uh, grating surrounding the animal, which uh, pr produces optic flow in addition to vestibular stimulation. And under the third condition, this platform will be stationary and the uh, mouse will just view uh, the vertical grating moving at the same rotation uh, profile, just mimicking the optic flow component. So uh, just a cartoon summary of the three conditions that I will talk about in this talk uh, is uh, rotation in the dark, vestibular only, rotation with optic flow, vestibular plus static visual, and uh, the replay of the optic flow or vision only condition. Okay, so to start with, um, first of all, the majority of AHV cells, 80% of them also encoded the velocity of passive rotation. And an example so, cell shown here, uh, many like this cell also had similar tuning between freely moving and a head fixed condition. And we quantify this by correlating the passive versus active uh, tuning and uh, define the cells that had correlations above a 95 percentile of the null distribution as similarly tuned. 
And this was about 50% of all the AHP cells recorded. So this uh, basically tell us that uh, the activity of these AHP neurons is primarily driven by vestibular inputs because here we don't, we, this is all in the dark, by the way, we don't have visual input. Uh, there is no uh, neck over body um, uh, movement uh, to have a proprioception from neck movements and uh, there's also no locomotion. Okay, so uh, we further uh, confirm that uh, whether these rotation evoke activities are actually dependent on vestibular organ by um, a targeted injection of canamycin, which lesions uh, the vestibular canals in posterior and the horizontal vestibular canals, um, the semicircular canals. So this is uh, the um, trajectory of the mouse before lesions and then after, and there, there are four mice overlaid. And you can see, uh, we can confirm these lesions uh, by uh, this increase in turning behavior, which is also quantified under here. So we know that these lesions were effective. And then, uh, yes, I saw a significant drop in both rotation evoke responses. This is again all in the dark and also speed modulation as shown in the heat maps here in the lesioned animals. In comparison, visual only uh, responses were not affected by these lesions. Okay, then another thing could be, but well, maybe these are actually due to eye movement. So I also uh, recorded eye movements uh, while uh, in, in some of the experiments uh, and uh, uh, look to see whether there is any correlation between the fine rates of uh, the RSP neurons and uh, these uh, eye movement, uh, the, the relative position of the eye. So here I'm just showing that we could extract these uh, eye movement events, uh, both uh, towards temporal and nasal uh, uh, eye movements. And also there's an example cell I'm showing here, one of the very few, which had a significant correlation between its firing rate, this is the uh, histogram of the firing rate, and uh, the eye movement in the nasal direction. And here just shows the correlation plots. And uh, this was very uh, small number of cells, uh, six in the nasal and eight in the temporal uh, um, uh, eye movement. So there's actually very small proportion of these cells that uh, show any correlation with uh, relative eye position. So this uh, uh, rotation evoke activities could not be uh, described uh, uh, dependent on eye movements. Okay, so. And next, we found that uh, these AHP neurons not only responded to vestibular stimulation, this uh, passive rotation in the dark, as shown with these uh, firing heat max on the top, but also to visual motion alone, as shown in the bottom, although these were weaker. So here's when the mouse is stationary and views a rotating vertical grating. So these AHP neurons receive both vestibular and visual signals. We ask, what is the significance of these visual input? to uh, these AHP cells. Uh, and I uh, looked into the open field recordings. I had recording both in darkness and in light. And I saw that in fact, the um, um, slope of the firing rate versus angular velocity relationship and the magnitude of this correlation increases uh, in light. Uh, so this is an example of one cell. And here you can see uh, the result of all the population. So this implies that visual inputs basically increase the gain and signal to noise of AHV signaling. So we hypothesize that the combination of vestibular and visual motion signals can increase the fidelity of angular velocity representation by RSP neurons and also drive a more uh, reliable estimation of angular velocity. We first uh, tested this perceptually. And so these are experiments done by Edward Bracey, who was previously posted in the lab. Um, the head fix mice were now uh, trained to report their own angular velocity in a go-no-go -no -go test. They had to discriminate between uh, S minus stimulus that had a peak uh, velocity of 10 degree per second and an S plus that uh, varied between 10 to 80 degree per second. And uh, here you can see in the plot in the complete darkness, they could reach high discrimination accuracies, but addition of a static visual stimulus improved both the threshold and uh, the accuracy of this discrimination. And uh, importantly, this was not due to sole reliance of uh, visual information because in a comparable visual motion discrimination task, they actually performed worse. Okay, so do we see the same thing at the level of RSP population? To answer this, I used LDA to decode the direction and the speed of uh, rotation from RSP population activity. On the top, I'm showing for uh, the decoding for direction and on the bottom for um, speed. And uh, here I'm actually plotting the uh, accuracy of the decoder in discriminating rotation and uh, discriminating between pairs of uh, rotation uh, speed. 
Uh, and on the uh, right panels, uh, you see uh, the same thing, but in vestibular lesion animals. So you can appreciate that a small number of cells between 10 to 50 were adequate to reach high decoding accuracy. These are all in darkness, so only re uh, relies on vestibular signals. And you can further see this by uh, the fact that these uh, discrimination, uh, these decoding accuracies are uh, significantly dropped with vestibular lesions. Uh, so now addition of uh, static visual stimulus, uh, this is data from all AHV cells, and, and as you see, improves the uh, decoding accuracy, uh, both for direction and the speed, and it cannot be explained solely by a visual uh, motion signals. Okay, so to summarize, I showed you that a significant proportion of RSV neurons encode self-motion, particularly AHV. Many of these AHV neurons display similar tuning properties between active and passive motion, I showed that vestibular and visual inputs converge onto these AHV neurons, and it seems that the visual inputs can increase the gain and signal to noise of AHV signaling. And also I showed that vestibular visual combination increases the perceptual accuracy of self-motion and the fidelity of the, uh, its representation by RSV ensembles. So I want to make a few concluding remarks. First, that uh, based on this data, uh, we propose angular velocity coding primarily depends on vestibular inputs. Second, uh, that um, while uh, vestibular inputs alone are sufficient for decoding direction and speed, optic flow and perhaps other inputs such as motor inference and proprioceptic inputs appear to have a modulatory role. I also want to highlight that uh, there is a lot of uh, attention on uh, visual inputs to RSP in terms of representation of spatial landmarks, but uh, what we see is that the significance uh, extends beyond this landmark representation and includes uh, also idiotetic visual information that uh, mean, um, together with allotetic uh, visual cues could maintain accurate uh, spatial orientation. And finally, I would want to suggest that perhaps we should have an update on the classical hierarchical models of head direction network, given how many conjunctive cells and also AHP tuning we have in this area, because in these uh, classical models, it's considered that cortical regions only inherit a pure allocentric representation of heading. So finally, I want to uh, thank everyone in the lab, particularly my advisor, Troy, and also everyone who contributed to this and our funders. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was, that was really beautiful.